Hallelujah. Anybody grateful to be in the house of God one more time? Anybody show sure enough grateful that the Lord has kept you from danger seen and unseen? We have come to magnify the Lord on today. We are grateful for those who are both physically in the worship experience and those of you who are joining us virtually. We say good morning to you. We are excited and we have the gospel choir and the sanctuary choir leading us in worship. So let us worship the Lord in spirit and in truth.
today. God, I want you to swing by the musician, swing by the sound booth, stop by the choir stand, stop by the pulpit, God, so that all of your people can give you the glory. God, I ask that you put a special hand on the preacher today. God, I ask that you put a special hand on our pastor this morning. God, I ask that, that, that you just move mountains. I, I ask that you turn mountains into molehills. I, I ask that you just come in here and just move your spirit in a mighty way that the people that came in here, they won't leave the same. And God, when it's all said and done, we know that you receive all the glory and all the honor because you are worthy. In your son Jesus' name we pray, amen.
Hallelujah. Every time I feel the Spirit moving in my heart, I will pray. Hallelujah. Thank you, Sanctuary Choir. It is now announcement time. Uh, if you're turning in right now virtually, you have not missed out. Yes, we did spring forward one hour last night. So you're early for next week's service. <laughs> we will be having Sunday school following this service. Um, all the information you should have received in the dish blast that went out on this week. Uh, the Lenten devotional that is given out by Pastor C can be found um, if you subscribe to it uh, through the DISC net network. If you have not received your DISC, you can call the office and we can add you to uh, the email list, the email blast, and you can catch up with that podcast. On Monday mornings, there's a new page with due page, and that prayer call at 7 a.m. comes early, but it's right on time. Amen. If you have not joined us, we welcome you to join all the information, once again, if you do not receive the disc, it's in the disc or on our website, www.amec, dupageamec.org, www.dupageamec.org. Once again, the time is here. It's Men's Day. Come on now. It's Men's Day. Hallelujah. And if you haven't been here before, Men's Day is something you have never experienced on this level. On Saturday, March the 19th, we have workshops. And on March the 20th, we have our very own, we already adopted him, Pastor Kill Dickens, who will be bringing the Men's Day message. Also coming up this month, we got DuPage Live Nation. Give it up for DuPage Live Nation, yes, yes. For our young people, Brother Jamal Williams is our senior minister to the youth, and they, he will be leading our young people in a new mission and new uh, ministry development. We also have coming up this month uh, to support our Chicago Conference Women and Missionary, our baby prince and princesses. Uh, we'll be hearing more about that. And also coming up, our Easter extravaganza and Easter egg hunt on April 16th. So there's a lot going on. Um, we can also look at all of our messages and all of our announcements on, once again, our website, www.dupageamec.org or in our, on our dish. Now is the time that we all look forward to. Do we have any visitors worshiping with us for the first time in the sanctuary or virtually? Any visitors worshiping with us for the first time in the sanctuary? Hallelujah! <laughs> we have two visitors. On behalf of Pastor C, we'd like to thank you for worshiping with us today. We pray that God has moved on your heart already in this service. And if you continue to listen on, that he will speak to you through the sermon. Um, led by our pastor C. You will also re be receiving a handout from the ushers where we can get your information and continue to keep in contact with you at a later time. At this time, we would ask that our visitors remain seated and that our congregation will stand and serenade them. There's a sweet, sweet spirit in this place.
each other with a holy kiss. Amen, amen, amen. We are indeed grateful that you are with us this morning. Uh, the two individuals here physically worshiping with us for the first time, we are so grateful uh, that you are here and thankful that you decided to come to DuPage AME on this morning. I would say on this cold morning, but some of my members reminded me today that it wasn't cold. Oh, okay. Uh, <laughs> just because you say it don't make it true. Amen. <laughs> right, it was cold to me. Amen. And when I let Bella out this morning, she looked like it was cold to her. Amen. She rushed right back in to our virtual visitors. We are so grateful. Uh, one of my uh, uh, mentors who uh, I grew up in ministry, or, or she pretty much was one of the parents when I was the youth minister uh, at my home church, Pastor Wilhelmina Devon Harvey, um, had fell ill, and, and, and so she is unable to hold her church service. And, uh, and typically when that happens, you know, they send the elder in, and, and the elder holds the church. And, and, and she decided, no, her and, and Ridge Grove, they would uh, be just fine. And, and so I want to give a shout out to Pastor Wilhelmina and to the Ridge Grove family from Hampton, Georgia, who worships with us this morning. Amen. 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 And she says it's cold in Georgia, so she knows these Georgia bones are cold. You're right, Pastor Will. Amen. And we have others who are worshiping with us uh, virtually. We're so grateful that you're here. We ask that you check in so that our online minister can greet you more formally. To those who are worshiping with us in the physical sanctuary, I believe our ushers have already given you something to fill out so that we can greet you again more formally. If not, just wave your hand in the usher so we can make sure uh, that we are able to do so. As Brother Dennis acknowledged, we have a couple of spe uh, special announcements today. And so I'll save, I'm sorry, Brother Baker, but I'm going to say the best for last. So, Brother Baker, you come first. Amen. <laughs> and so, Brother Baker will come and bring a men's day announcement. Why don't you greet him as he comes?
Sunday's event and hope to pack the house as much as we can. Amen, bro. With our God fearing, loving, Christian men of DuPage. Thank you and God bless. Amen. Thank you, Brother Baker. And it was no shade, it was no shade to the men. It's just we got a real special announcement coming up next. I mean, real, real special announcement coming up next. And so I want to present to you, DuPage family and friends, entire virtual congregation, um, our prince and princess of DuPage, uh, Mr. Messiah Breckenridge and Jury Hardy.
Amen, amen, amen. We've already welcomed our visitors. Uh, you all, uh, I, I love surprises. And, and, and folk who know me know I love surprises. And um, in the middle of the night, I woke up, because y'all know what my situation is, so I wake up in the middle of the night. And I uh, woke up in the middle of the night, and I saw a late text that said, sorry texting so late, but I got a friend from Milwaukee who just happens to be in Chicago today, and they were thinking about going to DuPage. And, but it looks like on the website, you all are only having an eight o'clock uh, service in person, is that true? So at 1.30 in the morning when I woke up again, uh, I responded, sorry, I'm up briefly. Uh, yes, that's true. And so it's not just a friend who's here, it's actually my sorrow and her husband, and I guess their friend too, amen. So I wanna recognize Ann and Dexter Talbert all the way, all the way from Atlanta, Georgia, who are here this morning along with one, Janice from Wisconsin, so she really is from Wisconsin, so you didn't make all of it up. Amen, so I, I paid, repaid the favor and text Kay and said, those my guests, bring them back down, yeah. <laughs> Amen, so welcome to the front row. Welcome to DuPage, we're glad you're here. It is offering time. It is giving time. It is giving time. Give and you will receive. Your gift will return to you in full, pressed down, shaken together to make room for more, right? Running over and pouring into your lap. The amount you give will determine the amount you get back. Does anybody want blessings pouring over? Does anybody want the God to shower you? Amen on today. We have multiple ways and multiple opportunities to be able to give. We give with our time and our talent, and this is our opportunity right now to give our treasure. It all belongs to God. We're just giving it back. A small portion, a small portion, a small portion. So ways to give it to Page. We have Cash App, which is dollar sign, to Page AMEC. We have Givelify. We have Simple Give. As Pastor Akil would say, we have the OG way. You can put a stamp on an envelope and write a check and send it to DuPage AME Church, 4300 Yackley Avenue, Lyle, Illinois, 60532. And for those present in the sanctuary, if you'd like to give monetarily, there will be a basket awaiting you upon leaving the sanctuary after the benediction. Amen, amen, and amen.
Amen. We praise God this morning for our music ministry who has blessed us, both Sanctuary Choir and Gospel Choir. Amen. We praise God for them both. Amen. Y'all can get a little some praise for them. Amen. 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 Praise God for our band. Amen. Amen. Our audiovisual ministry, our ushers, certainly our prince and princess who've given us the feels of, um, what's my show? What's the movie? Eddie Murphy? Come, coming to America. Thank you. Thank you, Sister Johnson. Because they let me out there by myself. Amen. Coming to, gave us all the feels. Thank you, Sister Cherry, for uh, uh, escorting our royalty. Amen. Amen. I hope that you all get the hint that we got to raise some money for them. Amen. Amen. So the church will uh, submit certainly a, a full page ad uh, for each of them. But we need your support so that we can bring home the crown from the conference level. Amen. So they already got it in this house. Now we got to go get the crown at the conference level. Amen. So we are celebrating them to our greeters and uh, parking ministry security and each and every one of you who are assembled. We are grateful for the second Sunday in this Lenten season. Amen. Y'all survive. Amen. Y'all all right. Amen. In these, for this 40-day journey. Amen. Y'all all right? Just a quick check in. Y'all holding on to your fast or whatever you gave up? Hey, y'all quiet. I don't know. Bro, Fred, it's looking a little questionable in here. All right. If you at home, y'all throw some hearts or something on the screen. Let me know y'all all right. Amen. In this Lenten season, as we strive to draw closer to God, I want to lift up for us the first six verses of Psalm 27. The first six verses of Psalm 27, uh, which, according to the lectionary calendar, uh, walks us continually through um, appropriate scripture um, of the Lenten season. And so on last week, we dealt with Jesus' testing. Amen. And we said that we are led even near test. Amen. And we learned that from Jesus in his moment in those 40 days in the wilderness, being tested, not tempted, tested by the devil. Now we come to say, all right, here we are, you know, going into week three of the Lenten season. Lord, help us. Amen. Somebody else asked the question, say the same thing. It was David. He's credited with this song. We'll read just those first six verses. It says this in the New International Version of the Bible. Y'all know these words. He says, the Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the stronghold of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? He says, when the wicked advance against me to devour me, it is my enemies and my foes who will stumble and fall. This is the key verse, verse 3. Though, my, though an army besiege me, my heart will not fear. The war break out against me. Even then, I will be confident. Verse 4. One thing I ask of the Lord, this only this only do I seek, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to gaze on the beauty of the Lord and to seek him in his temple. For in the day of trouble, he will keep me safe in his dwelling. He will hide me in the shelter of his sacred tent and set me high upon a rock. Then my head will be exalted above the enemies who surround me. At his sacred tent, I will sacrifice with shouts of joy. I will sing and make music to the Lord. All right, let's stand and take the doxology and go home. I mean, that's the sermon. 
That's it right there. But, but if I had to say something about the text this morning, I would tag it even then. Even, even then. Gracious and holy God, you've spoke through the praying of prayers and the singing of songs. You've shown up and helped us to feel your presence through the fellowship of believers, both physically and virtually. Now our prayer is simple. Speak for your servants are listening. It's our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Even then, Lent, Lent should draw us closer to God. It should. The season should draw us closer to God. Not, not simply by our fasting, whether it be a food or a behavior. I was talking to Sister Laura, some games but also through devotion, our picking up spiritual disciplines, praying more, seeking God more, trusting God more. But can I tell us that really Lent is the best season to fix our faith? Say it one more time. I think it went over at least two or three people's head. Lent is the best season to fix our faith. I, it's not a problem. It's not a problem. It's, you know, for those of y'all who are honest and you clout, I appreciate that because what you're saying to me is, Pastor, see, yeah, sometimes my faith need fixing. All right? For those of y'all who sat real still and looked at me like you ain't gotten in from this message already, <laughs> it suggests that you are in denial. <laughs> Be because, I mean, fortunately, I've never had to attend one, Doc, but, but, but I know that in every uh, self or, or help group that you would go to, whether it's Narcotics Anonymous or Alcoholics Anonymous or whomever anonymous, they tell you that the way that you really start to improve is that, bro, Williams, you got to show up and say, I got a problem. <laughs> and, and can we be real this morning that, that on, on this second Sunday of the Lenten season that, that sometimes we got a problem. We, get, we, 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 we have problems with our faith. It, uh, it, it, it's not, it doesn't mean that you got a problem with your God. No, that's not what it says. It's not, it's not that you don't believe in our God anymore. It's just that sometimes, you know, I can't call on the young to fix my life. I need to call on God to fix my faith. For, for the writer, the writer, the writer of Hebrews 11 uh, verse 1 told us that, that, that we've got to have the ability to declare that my faith, now faith, is the confidence in what I hope for and assurance about what I cannot see. And can we be real that, that sometimes it is not troublesome to believe God for what you can see already. God, if you say that you're going to heal me and I get the health report to prove it, then I'm all right. Uh, but God, when I'm looking for you to heal me and the doctor says it's not here yet, I might struggle. God, when I'm looking for you to give me peace in my home, but we still fussing and sometimes cussing then. I struggle to believe, to have confidence in what I hope for in this home, hope for in this body, hope for in my children. I, I struggle to have assurance because I can't see it. But can I suggest to us, and in these first six verses of Psalm 27, the psalmist spends the entirety of these six verses establishing a faith proclamation that we could benefit 
from in this Lenten season that we can say, God, I need you to fix my faith in a way that when I recite these six verses, I believe it. Oh, my God. And, and, and the way, the way that we can get to a place where we can recite these words, these words that the psalmist, uh, the scholars accredit to David, we, we can first get a hold to the first six verses by, by really looking at the fact that there are two words that David uses in verse number three that help us to really fix our faith. Can I tell you what those words are? Even... Then, it's in the text. He starts off, it sounds real good. Verse number one, the Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the stronghold of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? Verse two, when the wicked advance against me to devour me, it is my enemies and foes who will stumble and fall. And then verse three, though an army besiege me, my heart will not fear. Though war break out against me, even then. I will be confident. Uh, David uses these two words, not apart, but together, even then, to let us know that every now and then we will go through circumstances that will challenge our faith, issues that will cause us to lose hope and lose heart, M moments in our lives where our prayers seem to be going unanswered and we are trying to draw closer to God by giving up stuff. We're trying to draw closer to God by seeking God more and then we say but I am experiencing an army besieging me maybe it's not an army at your house physically but you know them kind of armies that keep you up at night those armies that keep you from sleeping those armies of misunderstanding those armies of, of a lack of appreciation those armies of, of family disputes those armies of issues on the job those armies armies of issues in your body those armies of issues in the community those armies of issues in the church those armies of issues in Ukraine those armies of gas prices being too high for us to keep the light off in the car those armies of gas prices being too high for us to keep the heat on in the house somebody ought to say I go through some armies but David tells Tells us uh, that even when the armies uh, besiege against us, uh, even uh, when the war breaks out against us, uh, we got to change our spirit uh, and we've got to get an even then uh, in our spirit uh, that even then uh, I will be confident uh, even then uh, I will be assured uh, even then uh, I will be cool uh, even then uh, I will be collected uh, not uh, because I can handle it uh, but I serve a God uh, who can do anything uh, but fail me uh, is there about uh, 20 folk in the house that say straight up past the sea I got an even then in my spirit that even then I shall be confident in the Lord not in my own ability but my hope is built on nothing less than Jesus blood and his righteousness even then I, I will, I will be confident. All right. How then, Pastor C, can I get to an even then? I will be confident. Uh, uh, well, you got to get verses one and two in your belt. Yeah. Before David gets to the fact that he has some struggles and some armies that will besiege him and some conflicts that will break out against him. Before David gets there, he has to make some declarations about who God is uh, in his life. Uh, see, many of us cannot get to the even then because we forgot to declare stuff before we got there. What are you saying, Pastor? See, you cannot wait until you are sick to start believing God to be a healer. 
we cannot wait until we are broke to believe God to be a provider. We cannot wait until we are lost to believe God to be a way maker. We cannot wait until we're burdened down to believe God to be a burden bearer. We cannot wait until we are in grief to believe God to be a comforter. But David says, before I end up in my even then, I got to declare the Lord is my light and the Lord is my salvation. Whom shall I fear? Oh, David had a little cock in his dentist that I like. He says the Lord is the stronghold of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? When you recite them kind of verses over your life before you need it, when the stuff comes, it's easy to respond even then. Why? Because before I got lost, I declared the Lord is my light and my salvation before life got dark i already declared the lord is my light and my salvation before it got hard i already declared the lord is my light and my salvation not only did i declare that the lord is my light and my salvation but david says the lord is the stronghold of my life uh, let me slow down and teach that uh, to be a stronghold suggests that you are a place of refuge to be a stronghold suggests that god is a fortress uh, in other words before david uh, got to the point where he acknowledged uh, that armies would besiege him uh, that war might break out against him david said the lord is my fortress in other words there is literally a protective barrier all around me so that uh, uh, I don't have uh, to demonstrate an evidence of fear. I don't even have to tremble because the Lord has built something around me that keeps me from my enemy. So David says, when the wicked, I'm in verse 2, advance against me, it's not me who will stumble and fall. Uh, David says, when the wicked advance against me it is my enemies and my foes who will stumble and fall it went over your head david said when it gets dark and i need some help the lord is my light and my salvation he said but the reason i can get to even then is because verse number two uh, when the wicked advance up against me it would seem like they are going to win because they're coming to devour me but it is my enemy and my foes who will stumble and fall what are you trying to say pastor see that you can't wait until the enemy is on your track to begin to pray to the lord but you got to declare when it happens they may have their expectation but i have already declared that my proclamation will be that god will cause them to stumble and fall is there anybody that's got a proclamation today that'll say it's my enemies that will stumble and fall it's the illness that will stumble and fall it's the hate that will stumble and fall it's the disease that will stumble and fall it's the depression that will stumble and fall it's the grief that will stumble and fall it's the naysayers that will stumble and fall it's my haters that will stumble and fall so watch me walk walk through my stuff walk through my trials walk through my tribulation because i already know that when they come to devour me god will god will i know he will i'm sure he will cause them to stumble and fall David, David teaches us that if we want to fix our faith, we got to get to a place 
where we don't wait till we need God to do something. We got to begin to declare it before we need it. Somebody ought to leave out here. The Lord is my light and my salvation. <laughs> Whom shall I fear? You need to go on that next Zoom call. When my enemies come to advance up against me, you're going to stumble and fall anyway. And so what? He says, listen, I will not fear. In order to get to, and even then, in our faith, we got to make some declarations before we need them. Not only must we make some declarations before we need them, but then David teaches us we can't be afraid to testify. Okay? I know you're private. You don't, you don't want nobody to know when you got something going on. Because you private. I get it. You know, you private. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's all right. But somewhere in the book, it say we overcome by the word of our, oh, y'all know the Bible, thank you, our testimony. And so after David pronounces his even then in verse number three, he begins his testimony. He says, one thing I ask from the Lord. And this only do I seek, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord. Don't miss it. All the days of my life. Back in the day in church, maybe not this church, but the Sunday school I grew up in. I love y'all, St. John. They used to tell us that the best days were after we finished this life. But I come by to break the myth that you get your best days when your body is in the grave and your soul is at peace with God. I can't wait for it. I I'll be excited when I get there. Everybody want to get to heaven, but ain't nobody in a rush to die. A and so can I give us good news that David says a part of your testimony is not that just you seek for God after this life is over. But David said, uh, one thing I ask from the Lord. And David said, this is all I'm going to seek after. That I may dwell in the house of the Lord uh, all the days of my life. Is it a bit of a stretch to suggest to you that David is not talking about when he finished his earthly world? But David said, all the days of my life and so David knew that when this life is over uh, he would get to the temple he said but what I'm seeking right now and it's all that I'm asking of the Lord is that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life in other words while I still got a heartbeat that can be perceived from my wrist I need to dwell in the house of the Lord while I got blood running through my veins I need to dwell in the house of of the Lord I can't wait till this life is over to get in the presence of the Lord so this Lenten season when you get an even then in your spirit can I suggest that you ought to seek a different thing that your testimony is not I'm seeking a house your testimony is not I'm seeking a man or a woman uh, my, your testimony is not that I'm seeking a promotion on the job but your testimony ought to be a uh, one thing I ask from the Lord 
and this only uh, do I seek uh, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days not just my good days but all the days not just when everything's all right but all the days when I'm disappointed all the days when I'm sick all the days when I'm well all the days when they agree with me all the days when they disagree with me all the days when I got plenty of friends all the days when they walking around being shady all the days of my life so that I can behold the beauty of the Lord and to seek him in his temple somebody ought to say God I'm seeking you all my days every day I wake up is another opportunity for me to seek you like never before every time I open my eyes it's another opportunity for me to seek the Lord and to see his beauty in this temple Lord I want to see you in me when I look in the mirror help me to see you when I walk on my job help me to see you when I walk through my house help me to see you when I walk in the church help me to see you in the grocery store help me to see you at the gas pump help me to see you because one thing I'm gonna ask and I'm not gonna change my mind I need to see you all the days of my life. Of my life. Why? For in the days, verse 5, of trouble, he will keep me safe. In his dwelling. He will hide me in the shelter of his sacred tent and set me high upon a rock. Why get that even then, Spirit? Verse 6. Because my head will be exalted. Not, 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 I, I won't exalt my head. Because if I exalt it, then somebody else can bring it down. But, but, but then my head, by God, will be exalted above the enemies who surround me. But at God's sacred tent, because I'm, I'm dwelling in his house, <laughs> I will sacrifice a shout of joy. <laughs> I will sing and make music to the Lord. My even then proceeds my praise. How, how can I get to a place where I can praise God when there's an army about? How can I praise God when there's wars breaking out? How can I praise God when I'm unsure of things? Because the Lord is going to lift my head above it. Above it. Which literally suggests that you're bigger than this. Define your this. That, that literally, the this that we face, you're bigger than it. When you, when I, when, when we decide to get an even this in our spirit. Or even then I will be confident. Lord, help me to fix my faith. 
that even then resounds from my lips every time an army shows up. Lord, help me to fix my faith so that even then falls from my mouth instead of tears from my eyes. Lord, help me to fix my faith because the constant in those first six verses is not just David's faith proclamation. The constant is also trouble, war, having an enemy. But the constant is also God. That even though every day won't be a great day, even though every day won't be an easy day, even though we will always have some type of struggle to face, the Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is a stronghold of my life. It's got a hedge of protection around you. Whom shall you be afraid? And when it happens, when they come, when they, when they come against you with their intent, God says it's them who will not only stumble, slow down, but they'll fall. <laughs> and your head, your head, smile, say my head, will be lifted above it. And your response is to sing a song of praise. To shout for joy that God has done it. And all you had to do was change your spirit. Will you change your spirit today? I mean, I mean, for real, like, don't play with me. Will you, will you change your spirit today? That, that even then I'll remain confident. That, that even then I'm going to be confident in the Lord. Now faith is confidence in what you hope for. Even then I'll be confident in what I hope for. Because God is able. So as we stand all over the building in the physical sanctuary and in your virtual sanctuary, we invite you to Christ. For you need a relationship with Christ to really change your spirit. So if you've never accepted Jesus as your Lord and Savior, I offer Christ to you. For those of you who are in the physical sanctuary, you can literally walk down to the altar. For those in the virtual sanctuary, our virtual minister is communicating with you, even now giving you an opportunity to give your life to Christ. Secondly, we offer you the opportunity for a church home. I would love to be your pastor. And so if you're looking for a church home, you, we invite you to come down even at this moment in the physical sanctuary and we'll receive you as members of the DuPage Nation. And for those who are, you, who are in the virtual sanctuary, we're, we're looking for you to become a part of this family too. And even if you live far away, you can say, I want to be a virtual member. We'd love to have you. And finally, the altar is hope open for prayer for you to seek God and say, fix my faith. I need to change my spirit. So the altar is open. You may come and we invite you to remain at each pillar at the chancel rail so that you will remain socially distant. And in your home, you may pray at this time. The altar is open.
God, we thank you for hearing our prayer on today. God, we declare in the name of Jesus that we want a new spirit. So God, we pray now that no matter what it is that we experience, that God, we will get an even then in our hearts and be bold enough to recite it out loud. Even then I am confident. God, we declare in the name of Jesus, we want to be confident in your promise. God, we want to be confident in your promise for our children. We want you to be, comp want to be confident in your promise for us. We want to be confident in the promise for our health. God, we want to be confident in the promise of the prayers that we've prayed for days and months and even years. And so, God, even now all over the building, we cry out even then. That, God, even now we open our mouths and say even then. In the physical and virtual sanctuary, God, we cry out even then. God, because you are the light and our salvation even then. That, God, you are the stronghold of our lives. So even then, God, when it advances against us, we've got an even then. Because, God, we are ready to lift up our shouts of joy and of praise. And so, God, we declare a man over the circumstance. It is so. God, we thank you that you have not forgotten about us. You have not forgotten about the prayers and the desires of our hearts. And so now, God, if there be one who's striving to give their life to you, God, we pray now that you will receive, th receive them into your fold, God. Forgive them for where they've fallen short, God, and allow them to feel the closeness that they desire. And God, if there be one who comes to unite in faith and fellowship whether today or tomorrow God God we pray now that we would be the church family you desire for us to be and then God we pray for every family represented here God both physically and virtually that God we will walk out of this worship space uh, and this worship time declaring even then I am confident we thank you for it and we declare it to be done in Jesus' name, hallelujah. Let the church say amen. amen. God has spoken. Yeah. Let the church say amen. Hallelujah. We praise God for the opportunity to worship God in spirit and in truth. We remind you that Sunday school begins at 10 a.m. via Zoom. So we invite you to attend Sunday school today. We also remind you that tomorrow morning, 7 a.m. Central Standard Time, praise the Lord. I already lost one hour of sleep. Somebody call me at 6.30 now. Amen. <laughs> For real. Amen. And, uh, <laughs> amen. 7 a.m. Central Standard Time, 8 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. We will turn a new page with DuPage for our Monday morning prayer call. Look for your weekly devotion coming out late on Tuesday. It really is for Wednesday, so I'm not late. I'm early. Amen. Blessed be. Amen. That weekly devotion will come out uh, this week, Tuesday night. If you're not receiving our Lenten devotions, check your spam if you signed up. Amen, because it's coming through MailChimp, so check your spam. If you aren't getting it, visit thepastorc.com, and you can su uh, subscribe to it. It's also in our due page dish. Amen. And so we are excited. Then on Wednesday, we are back with our Lenten Bible study. We're having a good time cl drawing closer to God. We've got a full week. Men's Day is coming up this weekend. Amen, amen, amen. And so the husband, Reverend Akil Dickens, will be here uh, preaching on next Sunday. We are excited about that. He is excited to return to his DuPage family. Amen. And so he will be here with us on next Sunday. And so we've got a full, full thing and DuPage live. Nation is also kicking off next Sunday. So make sure you tell those families who are at home, come to church, come to church. Because Mr. Jamal and uh, Sharita and Sally and Reverend Connie and somebody else. Am I missing somebody? That's everybody? Amen. The team, they are ready for Angel Church and for DuPage Live Nation. Amen. 
And so we are looking forward to that. If you're looking for a way to give to the Easter extravaganza, please see Mr. Jamal or uh, Sister Mavis Hawks. They've already sent out emails to the President's Council, but that doesn't mean you can't help. Amen. Because we want to make this a true extravaganza on Easter Saturday. We are looking forward to it. Amen. 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 And y'all doing y'all special benediction. Amen. So we're going to praise God from whom our blessings flow. And then our sanctuary choir will do the special benediction. Don't forget that prince and princess, Messiah and jury are waiting for you at the table. Don't worry if you don't have any graphic skills. You can still sponsor an ad. We will design one for you. Amen. No excuses. Let's bless these children as they strive to represent DuPage AME. Even then, I am confident. Even then, though the army besieged, though the war rage against me, even then, I am confident. So we begin to declare even now the Lord is my light and my salvation. The Lord is the stronghold of my life. So we only have one thing to seek. We seek the presence of God to dwell in the house of God when all the days of our lives. And then we shall lift up a shout of joy, lift up a song of praise, because God did just what God said God would do even then. So now unto him who is able to keep us from falling and to present us before his glorious presence with exceeding and great joy to the only God, our Savior, be glory, majesty, dominion, and power both now and forevermore. Let the people of God sing. <laughs> 